Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In this video, we are going to talk about Group A Streptococcus, also known as Streptococcus pyogenes. Right, uh, if you watched our introduction video, we said uh, gram-positive bacteria, we will be uh, representing them using uh, a blue background and gram-negative red right okay so here as you can see here uh, our header is in blue so group a streptococcus uh, is actually gram positive cocci uh, which is facultative anaerobe and it has a capsule but look here the capsule is made of hyaluronic acid and our tissues are able to produce hyaluronic acid what it means is that this capsule is not antigenic, right? It doesn't uh, stimulate our immune system to fight against the bacteria. So that's why you, we don't have uh, the coat which, which we used in the previous video to represent encapsulated bacteria. The other thing you need to know is that uh, in culture, group A streptococcus is actually beta hemolytic right so meaning to say it caused complete hemolysis right showing uh, a, a clear a clear you right a, a, around the colonies right it will be clear right now let's talk about the diseases caused by uh, streptococcus pyogenes right so you can uh, divide them into two groups the pyogenic infections uh, and infections uh, mediated by the toxins, right? So let's start with uh, pyogenic infections, right? Uh, firstly, you need to know uh, a superficial skin infection called impetigo. Uh, and also there is pharyngitis, commonly known as strep throat. Uh, the other soft tissue infection here is erysipelas. Uh, which is uh, sometimes you, you can confuse it with the cellulitis. It's almost the same thing, right? And one more thing which is not in our list is, uh, you know, in the region of head and neck, uh, this bacteria can also cause um, peritonsillar abscesses, right? You need to know that one, peritonsillar abscesses, All right? Now, let's talk about uh, streptococcal toxins, All right? So, now we're talking about diseases caused by what? Uh, by the toxins, right? So the toxin uh, produced by streptococcus pyogenes, right, is known as a streptococcal pyogenic exotoxin, right, or SPE, right? Uh, sometimes it's known as erythrogenic uh, exotoxin, right? Okay, so the first condition uh, is called the scarlet fever. Scarlet fever uh, is a common symptom known as strawberry tongue, like this. <laughs> okay, the other symptom is pharyngitis and diffuse rash that spares the face. Right, uh, the other condition is toxic shock-like syndrome. Because if you remember, toxic shock syndrome is caused by staph aureus. Toxic shock-like syndrome is caused by streptococcus pyogenes. What it means is that uh, this, this toxin is, uh, is super antigenic, right? It has the ability to stimulate uh, the, st the T cells to produce cytokines and then shock. The other condition is necrotizing fasciitis, right? So this will be inflammation of the fascia exactly, which can need um, surgical intervention or even uh, amputation if, uh, if it is uh, serious. Okay, so now let's talk about the complications, uh, complications of primary infection by the group A streptococcus, right? So there are two. We have rheumatic fever, and acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Okay, I made it. All right, so let's start with uh, rheumatic fever. Before we dig deep into rheumatic fever, I just want to give you the first uh, virulence factor, right? Uh, so the virulence factor 
produced by Streptococcus pyogenes is called M protein, right? M protein, right? And you can see that M is within the heart, right? You see something, just a moment. So this M protein is actually antiphagocytic. Uh, and it's antigenic, meaning to say it can stimulate the immune system to produce antibodies against it. Meaning to say this is the weakest point of this bacteria. We can actually produce antibodies and attack this what? Uh, this M protein. But there is a problem. Uh, because uh, the, this M protein, right, or the antibodies produced can attack our heart myosin, right? So this is known as... Uh, molecular mimicry so if you did your pathology you should know that this is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction right and the valve which is mostly involved is the mitral valve one more thing you need to know is that the examiner can confuse you uh like in terms of rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis right so on rheumatic fever, you should know one thing. This will only happen after strep throat. Not after those skin infections, but only after strep throat. Right. Let's move on. So here, uh, you know, let's talk about the symptoms, of course, of a rheumatic fever. So you can remember them by the mnemonic Jones. Jones, yeah, just like this. Okay, so J will be for joints, so this will be polyarthritis, and you can see the second one on O is a heart, so it's heart problems like pericarditis, uh, heart murmurs, and myocarditis, right? For N, it's actually nodules, particularly subcutaneous nodules. For E, it's actually erythema marginatum, and uh, for S, it's sydenham scoria right so is this is just a, like an involuntary movement of um like this let's talk about uh acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis right so if you hear glomerulonephritis the first symptom you need to uh to think of is coca-cola colored urine like right so uh, this condition occurs two weeks after strep throat or superficial infections like impetigo, right? Uh, the other symptom is facial edema, facial edema. And this uh, condition is actually a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Right, so here you can clearly see the differences with uh, rheumatic fever. Number one is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, or uh, while uh, the rheumatic fever is type 2, right? The second thing you need to note is uh, this uh, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis can occur uh, even after superficial skin infections like impetigo. But for rheumatic fever, we say this only after strep throat. The other thing is, uh, you know, in terms of treatment, because this bacteria, we can treat the infection using penicillin, right? So if you treat a patient with penicillin, then rheumatic fever will not okay. But the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis can okay after treatment with penicillin, right? So this can help you to uh, differentiate the two conditions. So now let's talk about the other virulence factors, right? So the first, firstly, we have uh, streptolysin O, right? Streptolysin O is very important uh, because, you know, after infection with uh, streptococcus pyogenes, uh, we can detect the anti-streptolysin O antibodies, Right, so these titers can help you to confirm that the patient has been uh, infected with what? With Streptococcus pyogenes, right? Uh, the second virulence factor is streptokinase, right? So streptokinase is actually an enzyme which converts plasminogen into plasmin. The third virulence factor I have here is 
DNA cis. DNA cis. Right. Okay, so here, if you still remember, I talked about uh, beta hemolytic streptococcus. So I said there are two. It's uh, group A and group B. These two, you can differentiate them using bacitracin, right? So group A is actually bacitracin sensitive. And group B, as you are going to see in the next video, is bacitracin resistant. All right, so this is our overview, All right? So we already covered staph aureus, staph epidemides, staph saprophyticus, streptococcus pneumonia, Veridans group streptococci, right? So in this video, we covered what? We covered uh, streptococcus pyogenes, right? So just a review. You should just know that uh, streptococcus groups are catalyst negative. They are arranged in pairs or chains. And here we are talking about a beta hemolytic, which causes complete hemolysis. And... Uh, you can separate these two using bacitracin sensitivity. And as you can see here, group A streptococcus or streptococcus pyogenes is actually uh, bacitracin sensitive. While list group B or streptococcus agalacti is actually uh, bacitracin resistant. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, give a thumbs up and leave a comment on the comment section. Please share these videos so that other people also benefit uh, from these uh, free videos. Please subscribe.